How's it going, everyone? And welcome to a post UFC 94 edition of WZR Radio Live from the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. I am, as always, your host, Ryan Clark, and we're going to be here for about the next 15 minutes uh, talking about last night's UFC 94 pay per view, uh, our thoughts on the uh, event and uh, other happenings that have uh, gone down here in Las Vegas. I got Matt Boone, who's out here with me. Matt B, what's up, man? I got no voice, man, but I'm going to go ahead and give this talk radio thing a try without vocal cords. What do you think? Yeah, no doubt, man. I'm actually, uh, it was a uh, rough night, actually rough day yesterday with, I don't know, I guess a little bit of, a little bit of drinking, yeah. We did a little bit of drinking, a little bit of gambling. We went over to the Playboy, uh, uh, over to the Palms, the Playboy Club. Uh, we did the UFC, did a lot of gambling on the fights, drank some more, took a piss, drank some more, brushed my hair, drank some more, clipped my toenails, drank some more. You get the idea by now. So basically, you drank a lot. Drink a, I'm drinking right now. Starting at 10 <laughs> you're going to do it. <laughs> no doubt. I, uh... We actually just woke up a little while ago, and I am uh, I am hung over to hell, but so be it. We're still here, and we're still going to do a uh, little bit of a radio show here right now. So, what do you think, man? Overall, we, uh, we went down to the UFC 94 pay-per-view last night, and uh, I thought it was a good show. I thought the uh, the main event was uh, was pretty good. I love that Clay Guida and uh, Nate Diaz fight to kick off the, uh, the pay-per-view there. I thought that was a real solid opener. There were a couple of... Uh, I don't want to see. Well, not really boring fights, but uh, you know, I mean, just well, not not major knockouts. You know what I mean? The Carl Parisian fight was boring. I mean, you can go ahead and say that. I mean, we left to go smoke a cigarette in the middle of that fight because it just stunk to hell. But I mean, yeah. the first round that that uh, the Japanese fight or the Korean fighter he was fighting was a. Uh, I mean, he was upset. I mean, it looked like he was going to win, and uh, you know, Carl eventually won a split decision. But it was razor thin, and some people thought he shouldn't have won. Other than that, though, every fight was pretty good. Like you said, Guido and Diaz was. Maybe the second best fight of the night. Some people say the first best fight of the night. I thought Leo to Machida and Thiago Silva was the fight of the night, even though it was one side. I mean, just being there was exciting as hell. You uh, picked a big upset on the radio, the pre-show we did yesterday. You said John Jones would beat Stephen Bonner, and I mean, he beat his ass. I mean, he threw that. You know what? He threw that. You know what? Back and oh, dropped the on his face. face. Now tell him the story. Go ahead, man. You gotta interrupt me. You tell him the story, buddy. Oh, that's my bad, my bad. <laughs> it's kind of it's kind of like an echo in here, man. I'm in, I'm in the bathroom again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. But um, no, I got um, I was actually after the uh, after the pay per view last night. Uh, we kind of we got lost uh, from each other, and uh, you guys made it back up to the hotel. I was actually lost in the casino, man. It's so big, <laughs> it's huge in here, man. Yeah. But uh, I got lost I mean, they got, anyway. They, they got a they got a they got an arena in the hotel, for Christ's sake, that holds 20,000 people. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, it's easy to get lost in a building like this, but... Yeah, uh, that place is packed. Yeah, well, I mean, getting out of there was insane. I mean, we were walking like an inch of, you know, every five minutes. I mean, you couldn't breathe. You couldn't move. You couldn't see anything. You were just praying to get the hell out of there. It took about 20 minutes just to walk about maybe, maybe 30, 40 feet. It was ridiculous. I mean, you can tell by my voice I was marking out all night, too. My God, GSP, that, that fight was great. Uh, let me just say something. Well, let me. I mean, as I was walking my uh, my way back to the, I uh, finally found my way back to the elevators, and uh, they were actually they had uh, Steph and Bonner on a uh, on a stretcher, and uh, just kind of wheeled them out, and everybody was like, "Ah, it's all right, Steph and man, it was a good fight, man, no doubt." And he was like, "Get get away from me, man! Come on, man! You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm on. A, they're taking me out of here on a stretcher, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? So that was uh, yeah, the thing. Yeah. You got you got to paint the picture though too. I mean, at this point, twenty thousand people just filtered out of that one room. The casino was packed even during the UFC. So you got Stephen Bonner being wheeled out of the main lobby in front of God forty, fifty thousand people. You just and then he's strapped to a gurney, getting wheeled out in front of everybody that just watched him fight. I mean, that's got to be that's that's got to be an ego killer right there, a pride killer. I mean, that, that sucks. Oh no doubt, and and you know what? I mean, we'll run that. Let's run down the card top to bottom. But uh, John Jones, man, really. I mean, that guy last night. I thought he really made a name, uh, a name for himself because nobody in that arena knew who he was, and everybody yeah. knew Stephen Bonner, but nobody knew who this other guy was. And uh, he came out and uh, beat him up pretty good. Beat Bonner up pretty good. Let's run it down uh, top to bottom. We won't do the prelims. 
Uh, we missed a couple of them, but uh, we got in there to see, I don't know, what, the final two or three prelims. And then uh, we, uh, we saw Manny Gamburian and Tiago Tavares. That fight was kind of slow, picked up towards the end a little bit. Uh, Tavares won that one. We saw John Fitch and uh, Akihiro Gono. Fitch just dominated that one, a decision. And uh, I think those were the only two prelims we caught, actually. So, All right, all right, no doubt. And then uh, we started off, the uh, the main card was... Uh, Started off with uh, my pick, man. I mean, I said it on the pre-show that I thought this was going to be the fight of the night, and I, you know, I, I know you don't agree with this, but I, I'm, I think that was the fight of the night. I think that was a good. I, Clay Guida is such an animal, man. I mean, he comes out and he runs around the ring like three or four times, gets all jacked, just like an animal. You know what I mean? I mean, right before he gets in the cage, that he's got his trainer smacking the shit out of him and needs to get him riled up. Crowd goes nuts when they do that too. Yeah, yeah. So we started off with that. Um, I actually threw some money, some uh, some pretty big money down on uh, on that fight, and uh, I still have to cash in my ticket to uh, see how much I picked the upset. Uh, Clay Guida was the uh, the underdog in that fight, and I had Guida. I'm just a big fan of Guida. We actually saw him out in the uh, in the lobby. I think we talked about that on the uh, pre-show. Who else did we see? Who was uh, the, uh, we didn't Who was the girl that was coming out of the Palms last night, man? Was it Monica? She's like an R&B singer. Was yeah, we saw, we saw Monica, but um, damn, now I forgot what I was going to say. What were you just saying? We saw, Oh, no, we saw Clay Guida yesterday. It uh, wasn't during the pre, or before the pre-show, though, because we saw him about two hours before his fight was scheduled. And he was just cruising around the casino in you know, regular street clothes, chilling. It was crazy. Yeah, right before the fight, you wouldn't expect to see somebody, you know, right in the casino right before a uh, right before yeah. a fight. But I mean, these guys, these guys just kind of walk around, you know, uh, throughout the people, kind of mix in with the people. And uh, yeah, you know, I mean, like the for example, Rashad Evans is on our floor right now. I mean, we were in the elevator with him last night after the event. Um, the matchmaker, UFC matchmaker Joe Silva. Uh, you know, we know him through the websites and stuff. We ran into him and had a little chat with him about the show. Told him it was a great show and all that good stuff. And yeah, uh, guys, I mean, God, the list, of fighters, okay. the list of fighters and celebrities we've seen is just endless right at this point. And now with the Super Bowl, we're going to, uh, we're going to, I think it's plush maybe. We're going to run out of table, and supposedly we're going to, you know, run into a lot more over there. So it's just cool to see them running around having fun in Vegas like everybody else, you know. Yeah, it's just like normal people. I mean, just, uh, well, Monica wasn't normal. I think they had, what, was it a Pavarazzi following her last no, no, no. night? Somebody was right in her face with a camera. It was a rea- She was filming a reality show, and they were like clearing everybody away, and uh, they, you know, uh, the cameraman was walking backwards that she was walking in and everything. So, ah, gotcha, gotcha. All right, so back to uh, back to UFC 94. We started it off. We had Clay Guida in the, and and uh, Nate Diaz. Guida got the upset. Uh, Guida looked great, man, but Nick Diaz, he's a technical fighter. I mean, Diaz didn't look bad by uh, by any means at all. But Guida was just, uh, you know, he was a better man last night. And I thought that was a great fight to open the pay per view, and I'll say that's my fight of the night, man. Definitely a great fight. I would say it's the second fight of the night. Uh, definitely an awesome, you know, fight to open the show. And you, you said Nate Diaz had a good showing. And, I mean, obviously they know that because it was a split decision. It wasn't like Guida dominated. But, you know, Guida definitely won the fight. There's no arguing that. But, uh, I mean, some people were arguing it that we were with. But I, I don't see any argument to be made. I think Guida definitely won two out of the three rounds. So, yeah, he, he got yeah, no doubt. And then uh, what was the second fight? I'm, uh, I'm drawing a blank, man. second fight of the night was... Carl Parisian and uh, Dong uh, Kim. So yeah, over, what uh, you know. Carl? Uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a terrible fight, man. That was just, I mean, they were on the ground and it was just there was a lot of holding. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, it was a lot of judo positioning and stuff like that. The first round was good, simply for the shock factor because uh, you know Carl Parisian is supposed to be, you know it's supposed to be the best judo player in MMA, you know, altogether. And and Dong Kim is supposedly like a national hero where he comes from, and supposedly like a world-renowned judo player himself. And he came out in the first round. I mean, he was he was dominating Carl quite thoroughly, you know. So I mean, yeah, that surprised me. Yeah, that was a surprise, man. Because Carl's a good fighter, like you said. I mean, a great fighter. We've seen him in the past on uh, on UFC pay per views. I mean, he's a he's a known name to the guys, and uh, yeah, that kind of took me off guard. But uh, overall, kind of a boring fight. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And then what was the third fight? Was that on uh, Machida? No, that wasn't Machida yet. That was uh, Stephen Bonner and John Jones. Ah, Stephen Bonner, John Jones. Uh, like I said, nobody really knew who John Jones was, and uh, he came out and took. So, I mean, Stephen Bonner looked horrible, and I, I've never. I said this on the pre-show. I've never been a big fan of uh, of Bonner's work. I just uh, there's something about him, man. I, he, he just doesn't do it for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. I said on the pre-show as well that um, 
I said this was my upset pick of the night. You know, John Jones over Stephen Bonner. John Jones is undefeated going into the fight. He's highly touted. Not a lot of people have seen him. Nobody can do. But, um, you know, Joe Silva, matchmaker, you know, he told everybody that, you know, this guy's the real deal and everything like that. And uh, he didn't, you know, he proved, you know, he lived up to those expectations. And he thoroughly dominated Bonner, like I said earlier. Too. I mean, you've seen a lot of spinning back kicks, spinning back fists. This was the first ever time I saw a spinning back elbow, and it dropped Bonner right on his face. He got up, and then John Jones threw a perfect knee in his chin. You know, the replays, when they showed that in between rounds, the crowd was going crazy watching that. And, uh, I mean, John Jones kept up the ball three rounds. He thoroughly, thoroughly dominated and won an easy decision. And uh, he's definitely going to be a new player in the 205-pound division. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. You will uh, you will definitely see John Jones on uh, on future UFC pay-per-views uh, after last night for sure, man. I mean, yeah. if that was a place to make an impression over Bonner, uh, you know, this was the place to do it. At a, at a big show like that, UFC 94, and uh, he came out and, and just destroyed Bonner. You know, like I said, I mean, I passed poor Bonner, you know, being taken out of here on a stretcher on my way back up to the hotel room last night. So, I mean... Pretty brutal, man. And then the next fight, that was the uh, fourth fight of the night, was uh, Silva and Machida. I'll tell you what, man, Machida is, is over big with uh, with this Las Vegas crowd, no doubt. Yeah. And, uh, yeah uh, I mean, it was a good fight for sure. I mean, he's coming off, you know, impressive wins over Tito Ortiz and, you know, guys like that. I mean, he's definitely worked his way through the rankings. He's undefeated. A lot of people say he's overly cautious. But last night, he threw caution to the wing against a dangerous striker who was also 13-0, and nine of those 13 wins was by first-round knockout. And Lyoto Mishida got the first-round knockout, which was crazy because, okay, I mean, he was dominating the whole round. But then he had him on the ground, boom, boom, two hammer fists. Silva went unconscious as the horn sounded. The referee didn't see him. He was telling Machida to go back to his corner. The referee turns around, sees he's out, starts waving his hands. Crowd goes ballistic, and Lyoto Mishida continues his undefeated streak and uh, should be in line for a title shot with that kind of win. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it, man. And that was, uh, I mean, you picked that for fight of the night. I'd say that was, uh, you know what, I'm going to say that was the third best fight of the night because I'm going to put B.J. Penn and George St. Pierre as the number two fight of the night because, I mean, B.J. got, I mean, we're going to talk about that right now, but can I say B.J. got marked? You could say that, if, yeah, it would be true, yeah. Yeah, I mean, elbow, brutal elbows to the faces. Even there was even one point where DSP was just throwing, throwing like jabs. You know what I mean? And they were they were just landing. They were these jabs, are, and you'd see BJ's head just snap back. You know what I mean? And this just went over and over and over. And the funny thing about it is, um, on that pre-show that uh, they did the three-part series for the past three three weeks leading up to the fight, um, one of the major things, man, was that. BJ fights to death. He never taps out. He never throws in the towel. Da 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 da. This and that. BJ never quits. We get to the fourth round, going into the fifth round, and BJ's corner threw in the towel. So, I, you know, I mean, it's just I, something about BJ, man. I mean, I, I just I, I had a feeling coming in that George Napier was just, I mean, training wise, he was he was in better condition, ready to go. I mean, GSP looks like somebody that's. He's a guy to be reckoned with, no doubt, man, and he is over. I mean, you guys would be shocked to see the amount of Canadian fans that are here and Hawaiian fans that are here. I mean, I'm talking and about Asian, thousands. general Asian people. I mean, there's a million Asian people with BJ Penn, Team Penn, Hawaii shirts running around. And, and like you said, these, I mean, you, you, could look around that, you, could look, you could look around that whole arena last night and see, I mean, my God, hundreds and hundreds of Canadian flags, and they, they were loud people. I mean, during other fights, I mean, main card fights like Diaz and Guido, which the crowd was way into, but they would, in the middle of that fight, every once in a while, you'd start hearing big, loud chants of, you know, either GSP, GSP, or BJ Penn, BJ Penn. I mean, they were ready for that fight. They were psyched for that fight all night. Like I said on the pre-show, I mean, we were going to strip clubs. We're going to high-class clubs. We're going to private rooms. We're doing all this crazy high-finance stuff, and everywhere we go, you know, there's DJs and stuff like that over the PA system, whatever. Everywhere we go, they're mentioning, you know, who we got in the house tonight? Like, some GSP fans, some BJ Penn fans, UFC. But, I mean, this, like we mentioned yesterday, the big fight atmosphere in Vegas, and it's still going on now, slowly starting to transition to Super Bowl fever. But, I mean, the UFC uh, presence is still, you know, strong here in Las Vegas right now. You know, wrestling fans and UFC fans are so different, man. I mean, it is it is an absolutely different fan base. And, uh, 
You know, I mean, when we bring the UFC segments up on WZR radio, you know, I mean, a lot of people tune out because it's a wrestling radio show program. But, man, I mean, it is un. Believable how much of a difference is it? You think that wrestling and UFC would kind of mix up? It doesn't. That wrestling fans are stuck on wrestling. UFC fans are hate wrestling. You know what I mean? I, I, they yeah. hate each other. You know what I'm saying? It, it works both ways. But uh, I mean, shoot, guys. I mean, if you haven't watched UFC, I mean, just give this thing a try. I'm telling you right now, this is. Uh, I mean, it's already taken out wrestling. It's already way above them in pay-per-view buy rates. Has been for a long time. Boxing way ahead of them. Pay-per-view buy rates has been for a while. Unless boxing puts on puts on like a mega, mega fight, uh, they, they might be able to top a UFC pay-per-view buy rate. But, I mean, just regular shows, regular pay-per-views, I mean, UFC, I mean, 500,000 buy rates easily is, is nothing these days for them. You know, I mean, 500,000 buy rates would probably be considered low, you know what I mean, at, at, at this point in time, you know? Yeah, it'll be a little bit below average. I mean, last night there's easily over a million people that ordered that pay per view. So, I mean, that right there alone is like a WrestleMania pay per view buy right, which WWE only has one of. But let me ask you this question: You've been to more wrestling shows than maybe anybody I've ever known in my life, and this was the first time you've been to a uh, UFC show. Why don't you uh, talk about some of the differences of the live, uh, you know, the live atmosphere of a UFC crowd versus the live atmosphere of a pro wrestling crowd? What were some of the you know changes and well, differences let's, let's, you saw? Let me just say it like this, man. Uh, I mean, like you said, I've been to a lot of wrestling events. I've seen guys like, uh, you know, Steve Austin, The Rocks. I mean, he kind of get those, yeah. those massive pops, you know what I mean? The Austin pop, I mean, the, the, the roof on the arena almost gets blown off the place, you know what I mean? It's huge. When yeah. GSP came out last night, I have never in my life, and I've, I've seen Austin, I've seen all the big guys in WWE in their prime, no, I have never seen that big of a pop for GSP. I mean, my ears, man, we looked at each other and said, holy shit, man, are you, you got to be kidding me. I mean, yeah. that, that, my ears, I mean, that blew my eardrums, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was, yeah. it was, not, only that, was not only that, not only that pop was awesome, but the, uh, I would say if it's not, it rivaled, maybe, maybe even a bigger pop was when the fight was called, and then you'll remember uh, I had you and a couple buddies on my right side of me, and I had my boss and a couple of his buddies on my left side of me. And right after the fourth round ended, horn, horn sounds, I looked over to the left, and I said, yo, I bet they stop it right now. I looked over to you guys and said, watch, I bet they're going to stop it right now. Boom, they stopped it right then and there. You could just look at BJ Penn, BJ Penn's face and see he did not want to go out for that final round. He was just getting he was getting worked over, and he had no chance of pulling off a finish, which he would have needed because there was no way he was one of the decision. He didn't want to single around in that fight. Not only that, but another difference from wrestling events is I know when somebody gets uh, chopped across the chest, you can hear the slap throughout the arena in wrestling. I, when these guys throw punches and they hit the other guy in the face, like yeah. punch, and you hear slaps, man. I mean, even with punches, man, even with punches, you hear whack, you know, and that's that's a solid, solid punch to a guy's face, you know what I'm saying? I mean, it was, I mean that shit is no no joke, and, you know, it would be okay. They'd be, uh, I mean, it'd still be loud in there. It wouldn't go silent, but every time, like, a big shot landed, somebody would, even if it would just jab, anytime something landed, the crowd would pop. And then it would go back down to the normal level. Then the crowd would pop again, back to the normal level. Pop again, every punch or every kick, everything that landed. You know what I mean? Yes? Yeah, all right, yo. Keep talking, man. I got to take a My boss is calling in on me, so I got to see what he wants. All right, no doubt. Go ahead. Um, well, actually, you know what? We're done. We're, we're actually uh, going to get out of here anyway. So um, I'm going to talk to you guys. My, um, my flight arrives home tomorrow in uh, Albany, New York. I think I fly out of here at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, something like that. 3 o'clock, Las Vegas time. Um, and then I arrive back in uh, Albany, New York at about midnight tomorrow night. I'll try to get some stuff on the site um, when I get home. I know JMK is uh, is holding down the sites for me and uh, recording this radio show right now. So I really appreciate uh everything that he's done for me. And uh, I'll be back uh, Tuesday night, me and Jose Rivera, for uh, WZR Radio, um, check out the website, WZRonline.com, and uh, I will talk to you guys on Tuesday night. All right, so from the MGM Grand Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, for Matt Boone, this is Ryan Clark. And see you Tuesday night, 7 to 9 Eastern Time, right here on WZR
Online dot com. Later, guys.